Hello, my name is Albert Gurria, and welcome to another installment of Slam and Synapsis. I know it's been a while since I've done these. Uh, I've said before that it's on basically temporary hiatus, because I never really was sure when I'd be back doing this, and if I were back to do this, for how long? So, decided to bring you a segment today, because we're going to go into a topic that's been discussed a lot in terms of the goings-on with the Universal Championship and the fact that Goldberg is the new Universal Champion. To me, there's a narrative that's that's completely lost in all this. Narrative that was started, but they just decided that it really wasn't worth following up on. Back when the Universal Championship came about, they had a tournament, and it was won by Finn Balor. Or Valor. Balor, Balor, however you want to pronounce it. In any case... Shortly after he won the title, he went out with an injury with with shoulder stuff. And so they had to do another tournament. And the winner of that one was Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, who would then go on to, def to defend the title and be the Universal Champion. During the time that he's the champion, they folk they get back to Finn, below to Finn from time to time to check on how he's doing, see his progress there. So you're thinking that basically we're going to build up to at least Wrestlemania because as of I think about a week or so ago he's basically been cleared he's been booked for show Finn that is he's been booked for shows so you're thinking that's going to be where they're going for Wrestlemania because it fits the narrative it fits the complete and total narrative that was started back when Finn had to had to give up the title and Kevin won the spot Goldberg wasn't a part of the narrative Brock Lesnar wasn't part of the of the narrative. Neither one of them was involved. No one else was involved in the narrative either. The only two people that was involved in the narrative was Finn and Kevin. So, like I said, you're thinking that you're thinking that okay, we're gonna do we're gonna take a swerve down a different road. Um, have Goldberg in a match with Kevin Owens, and there was a lot of talk that oh, Ke Goldberg was walking away with the title. And to me, if that was the narrative from the start, then it probably wouldn't bug me as much. Because it's like, okay, you're bringing Goldberg back off the popularity of the video game and the pregame bonus. You're, 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 you're working off that. That, okay, this is the payoff. With that, you're paying off with Goldberg winning the title, becoming a, a focused match in WrestleMania, and so be it. If that was the narrative, but it wasn't. The narrative that they kept building on is Finn and Kevin, which would have made, which definitely makes a much much better story because with Finn coming back, then basically his his focus, his mindset is on gaining back the title. He didn't lose in the first place. Well, lost due to injury, but it's a title that he wasn't pinned, didn't submit. Well, kind of submitted with the injury, but basically it he didn't really lose the title. So he comes back to show that he is worthy of the title and goes on to face Kevin Owens. And you could either go with either Finn winning the title back or Kevin Owens basically showing why he still up to that point was the champion. That was the narrative. The narrative wasn't Goldberg winning the title. The narrative wasn't Brock Lesnar winning the title. The narrative up to, that, up to the point of Goldberg getting involved is Finn and, Finn and Kevin. So, all these people are like, oh, it's oh, it's like Goldberg's a part-timer, you guys should get over it. Um, it's like, what, what do you, what's the big deal that Goldberg is the champion? To most of us that follow good stories and know how storylines go or have at least a good idea about them, Goldberg wasn't a part of it. I know I'm kind of repetitive in this video, but I can't stress enough. To me, Goldberg wasn't part of this narrative. Never was. Now, if it was a matter of, like I said, you had the video game bone, video game thing, Kevin Owens a champion, they keep talking about Kevin Owens against Goldberg, or what's going to happen with Goldberg, what, what, what would happen if Goldberg take, took on Kevin Owens? No, it just seems like, okay, we need something for Mania. We're going to throw this together last minute. We're going to give Goldberg the title because we're going to 
be able to use them as a main event in the title for someone who is now basically a there in WWE because he has to be now. Not because he really wants to be, because he's basically has that one year doping situation from UFC against him. So it's not like he could just go back to UFC when he wants to or MMA when he wants to because he's kind of banned from them for a while based on the stuff that happened with Mike Hunt a few months ago. So, so yeah, this just seems like it was just thrown together, complete last minute, just to say, okay, we're going to have a thing. But you could have Goldberg Lesnar without the title on the line. You could basically have Goldberg walk away. Um, Brock Lesnar could have cost him the title. Um, there could be many storyline possibilities that has Goldberg not winning the title, but but Goldberg still being important in a main event style match, taking on Brock Lesnar. Because I mean, basically, if Brock Lesnar beats Goldberg, then what does that say? He's basically still down two to one. I mean, you would have to have two more matches. With Brock Lesnar going over on them to say that Brock has a definite advantage over Goldberg. True or false? So, but yeah, there's so many ways that they could have had Goldberg go into Mania strong against Lesnar without the title being on the line and having the narrative continue of Kevin Owens being your champion and Finn Balor coming back to get him. Whether he would have been cleared in time for WrestleMania or not, that narrative would have still gone on. Now the narrative is gone because it's basically it's not I'm coming after the man that won the title that I'm that I was supposed to have. It's like no, I'm instead I'm going after this guy because he's the champion. But there's you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I hope you do. I really hope you do. That's why that's why basically I say there's a problem with how. The creative process in WWE is because, like I said, things just seem to get thrown together last minute. Things are geared towards what they say as a particular audience, but <laughs> to be honest, the particular audience they're gearing it towards is actually much smarter than that. So I don't know who you're gearing them toward because they're not gearing it towards that audience. So, <coughs> excuse me. So yeah. The narrative lost. And there's and you can't really get back to it. You've destroyed that opportunity to get back to it. I mean, essentially, you could put the title back on Kevin Owens, but that mystique is gone. That you'll never get back. Because they decided, oh, we wanted to go with Goldberg versus Lesnar for the title at Mania. Which basically is just another case of a part-timer coming back Taking a spot that people that have worked their butt off to get to. I mean, imagine you're you work your butt off, you do you do what you need to do, you put in the work. You're thinking you're going to get rewarded at the biggest event of the year, and instead you're not. Really, you're not. You're not. You're not rewarded for your hard work and effort because your spots are given to someone who's basically just flying by. It's like hi, bye. <coughs> Coming down. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, not editing out though. Sorry. So. So yeah, the Finn and Kevin Mystique gone, destroyed. They could try to get it back, but it's gone. And that's sad, because they could have. It's like basically, they were building towards that. I mean, basically, recently they started focusing on Finn's return. It's like he's coming back. He's making his... He's coming back to action. But what's he coming back to? I mean, it's not like he could go back to a world championship against the person who won the tournament. Um, it's not like he's going to get put back into a tournament, into a title position anyway. Because it looks like they're going to be pairing Kevin off with, with Jericho. No, I'm not sure if he's going to be staying, if Jericho's going to be staying around after Mania or not. But we'll see. It's just, I can't see them finding a logical way to get back to having Finn in a meaning world title situation 
that wasn't there before that basically was there before so sorry for the rambling sorry for, sorry for the repetitive nature of this video but it's something that I felt something that's there it's like something that mm, just just bothers me been a wrestling fan since since 83 so I've been doing this for a while I've seen bad storylines I've seen good storylines I've seen pretty much what you would predict to be the storyline but going but going off nice swerves nice angles to mix up the story and that that I have no problem with but when there's a story that's made that's set basically in stone for the most part that's the most logical progression as to where to go and it doesn't go there for what for 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 an epness or what if it's not going there for no other reason than to just not go there and work off nostalgia purposes for someone that's probably just there for a cup of coffee That's why that's why I, that's why I get bothered. That's why it bothers me some days. That's why I'm really not invested that much in the product these days anymore because basically the booking, the creative aspect has pretty much destroyed a lot of what makes someone like me interested in watching the product because there's really no no logical focus on anything. There's no there's no there's basically times that they're insulting intelligence insulting the audience more than anything there's times that they refuse to be serious now myself i tend to i tend to find i tend to try to find humor and stuff i get serious when i need to but when it comes to wrestling um, wrestling is all about for the most part it's about grit and seriousness but if you're going to start doing being serious, but then you have this attention issue and you want to make it more funny than anything at times when it's really not advisable to be funny. And you kill the drama that storylines have brought, then that's just bad creative. So. Change your gears here for a moment. Today, and I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, so there's been a lot of a lot of things that's been happening in the world of wrestling. You have you have Ivan Koloff that passed away. You have Nicole Bass that passed away. You have I can't think straight. You have George Steele that passed away. You have all these fine, you have all these talents just passing away. Knowledge gone. And today, as of this recording, we had another one to that list, and that being the outlaw Ron Bass. Myself, I knew, I saw Ron Bass when he was in the worldwide wrestling days with Jim Crocker Promotions. Very 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 serious brawler with his whip <laughs> and so when he came to WWF and they were okay with him but they didn't but the edge that he had of course went bye bye but Ron Bass was definitely a great talent and one of those along the lines of like a Stan Hansen or or a Steve Williams or people of that nature that was all about the about basically the bare knuckle brawling aspect of the sport. You don't see that nowadays. You don't see that too much, I should say, in wrestling. But it was definitely a great talent. And he's definitely going to be missed. 
along with all the other superstars that have passed away throughout the years. So rest in peace, Ron Bass. Rest in peace, George Steele, Nicole Bass, Ivan Koloff, and everyone else that have just gone on to the great beyond. So I think that is going to be it for me today. If you like this video, throw a like on it. Uh, if you want to subscribe, go ahead. I'm not sure how often I'll be doing future videos, but feel free to do so that, so that you're kept up on that. Um, drop me a comment in the box below. Tell me what you think of this. Um, if you feel that if you're in the wrestling business yourself, you want to share this with people so they have an idea what this man, one guy's perspective on stuff is. Feel free to do so too. But I guess I'm just old. I'm old. I'm jaded. I have my expectations. But a lot of that jadedness, a lot of that expectations, like I said, comes from a time when storylines were done properly. When people knew how to do and craft a wrestling storyline. And that's where that comes from. Not the ineptness that's happening now. I know, a way to get back into a rant again after, after going on with an end memory of... But I apologize for that. That's on me. So, so that's going to be it for me. This is Albert Gurrier saying see you again on another installment whenever somewhere down the line of Slam and Synapsis. See you next time. Good night, everybody, and so long from ringside.